All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our two D sandbox series. So today we're just gonna we're gonna implement uh, tile drops, but a um, couple of things to fix from our place tile function and stuff, um, just to update this and make it a little bit better. So let's get started. First thing we want to do is actually take bool background elements from here. We're gonna control X and get rid of that, and then control V that here. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because now bool background element is going to equal tile dot is background in background, right? Uh, that's going to give us a bunch of errors every single time we call place tile. Um, but basically, what that means is now, for example, we're going to have different tile classes for tiles which we place in the background, such as um, pretty much the exact same as Terraria's wall tiles. How those are specific tiles which go in the background. So we're going to define those in our tile class. That way, when we place them, they automatically go in the background. It's not something we assign by code here each time we place our tile, because that doesn't make much sense. Um, this came to me in the middle of the last episode, but didn't ha really have any chance to fix it. Uh, regardless, that should be fine for our place tile function. It's just that now we just have to get rid of background element in each instance we call uh, place tile. So let's scroll up, place tile, see how it always says here, true, we don't need this anymore. We can just get rid of that. Um, we've been changing these functions quite a lot, and I do apologize, but these, if we did this initially, this wouldn't have worked anyway, so um, it's kind of just a step we have to take in development. Anyway, that should be fine. What I'm going to do now real quick before we move on though is just test it, make sure we haven't caused the program to collapse on itself. So, um, here we go. I'm in my world. That's cool. Can I place tiles? Let's see. I can. I can't place tiles on top of existing tiles. I can remove tiles. Yep. Can I place tiles on top of background tiles? Yes, I can. And it also removes the background tiles. Yes. So that is perfect. That's exactly what we did want. Now we're going to do some tile drops. So what is a tile drop? A tile drop is going to be essentially a prefabricated object, which is a sprite. And it just drops. It spawns each time a tile is broken. So how do we do that? Um, like this. We're going to say create 2D object in our hierarchy. And then we're going to say sprites. And then we'll say just a square for now. Uh, this we're going to name tile drop. Um, in fact, I'll give it tile drop like that. Um, and then we want to reset its transform just like that by clicking the three dots. Um, so this is it. That's our sprite. We're going to give it a this. Um, the tile drop sprite is going to be determined by the sprite that is broken. So it's going to drop the exact same sprite uh, from the tile class. Make sense? Um, order and layer, right? So this is important. We want it to be behind our player. So our highest one uh, is one here. So we should probably have it on the same layer as that, I think. Uh, is that going to make sense? No, we'll say minus two, actually, because our back legs and back arms are at minus one. We want the tile drop to be behind that as well. So order and layer minus two, that's super important. Otherwise, you might get some weird looking results. Apart from that, that's pretty much our tile drop done. We just need to give it a box collider uh, of type 2D. That's going to give us a square. Uh, make this is trigger. That way it does. it's not affected by physics. Is that right? Uh, yes. So size of this ed, um, trigger collider should be 1.5 and then 1.5. So it's slightly bigger than this um, sprite itself. Then we want another box collider 2d and this is going to be not is trigger so leave that unchecked and then size should be one by one so that means this it's going to fall onto the ground on like this imagine that line here is the ground it's going to fall here but the player needs to be within this outer box to collect it makes sense um it's just slightly better that way um and then we want to also give it a rigid body 2d uh maybe we should give it a higher gravity scale of maybe five um but yeah that should be fine uh, apart from that 
I'm going to set its scale so that it is 0.4 by 0.4, so it's smaller than a um, normal sprite, maybe 0.5 by 0.5 actually. So it's a fourth of the size, which is perfect. So let's reset the transform, that's fine. Um, the sprite you put here doesn't matter, it's going to get changed by code anyway. But I'm going to drag and drop that into the inspector, that's going to give us, me, uh, give us a um, cool little preview here of the prefab. Um, and that is our prefab done. You can now delete it from the scene. Cool. Save the scene. Nice. Now, we want to go back to our terrain generator script. Scroll all the way up. Um, that's fine. Let's, uh, let's create a new public game object. Public game object. And we'll call this tile drop. There we go. Uh, and then in our scene, so you go back to Unity, you want to click on your terrain object, and we're just going to set that prefab real quick. So drag and drop your tile drop into tile drop, just like that. Save the Unity. Let's get rid of the console. Um, there we go. And then in our remove tile function, which I believe is down here, here we go. So we're destroying it, and then we're removing it from the list. That's fine. Uh, we also just want to say, though, um, before we destroy it, uh, actually, no, just after we destroy it, yes. Um, simply want to say instantiate. Uh, instantiate, what that does is it basically duplicates the game object. So imagine it as like a clone function, almost. Um, so we're going to clone it. The object original is tile drop, so that's the object we're cloning. And then it's going to ask for a transform that parent. We're going to ignore that. We're going to say new vector to x and y. And then you'll see that the function actually changes. So now it's asking for a uh, bool instantiate in world space. We're going to ignore that as well. We're going to say quaternion.identity. And then we're going to say uh, no transform parent so that it just spawns in the world. So this is going to be generated. Um, so this is the object that's being duplicated. That's the position it's duplicated at. And that's its rotation. Um, if I say quaternion, or however you say that, the identity, it means it just keeps the original rotation that that object has um, without modifying, which is exactly what we want. Um, apart from that, the thing we actually want to do as well, we'll say game object um, new tile drop equals instantiate, because this actually returns a game object as well. Um, and then I can say new tile drop dot get component sprite renderer dot sprite equals uh we're gonna say equals world tiles he world class tiles yes so equals world class tiles dot uh world class tiles and then world tiles index of x and y cool so that's gonna work right dot uh, tile sprites zero. Yes. So, what that does is is setting the sprite of the tile drop to the um. So it's getting the position of the mouse and y uh x mouse x and mouse y coordinates, uh, and then inside this list, which returns a integer. Then that integer is the same in so the index of this position in this list is the same as that position in this list, but we can't get um, the object in this list using position because it's a tile class list. A uh, bit confusing, but we've used that here as well so you guys kind of understand what it does now, I guess. Um, and then we're just getting the first uh, sprite inside its tile sprites list. That way all tile drops look the same, um, but not all sprites look the same. Uh, not all tiles look the same. Uh, here, let me do it and you'll... You get a better idea of what it does. <laughs> um, so, save it in Unity. Let's clear our console. Let's hit play. And theoretically, if I now break a tile, um, there we go. So now you can see that tiles are dropping, but you can also see that they're kind of. Um, generating like almost below the terrain which is kind of odd um so that's not what we want what we want um also it depends how you guys want to do your tiles um of course at this point 
um, do expect that they are gonna pile up a lot like this. I kind of like this effect of having like physics a lot on them. Um, it's completely up to however you guys want your games to be. You can have them so they are static in the air if you want. That's just to do with the rigid body component. So just modify that however you feel like. Um, here, oh wait, no, sorry, on the tile drop. Here, so you, if you want, you can say uh, unsimulated, so that way it doesn't fall. You can freeze its rotation so it doesn't rotate in the air, um, which I might actually do. Uh, don't freeze X and Y if you're making it, you know, rigid. Freeze it if you want it to be, um, you know, all good. You guys get, you guys are able to customize that however you feel like. Um, the thing I actually need to do now, though, is what we need to do is create a new C# -sharp script, which is our tile drop controller, almost. So tile drop controller. Uh, and basically, this script is going to generate on every tile drop, and it's just going to say, if I'm touching the player, then delete me. Um, so we don't need that, don't need that, don't need that, that's fine. Uh, we need to say void on trigger enter. So we use this on the player to detect ground. Now we're going to say, if I'm touching the player, so change other to cold, that's fine. If game object dot uh, tag dot compare tag it was yes um of type player so if our player has the player tag which it should um then it's just gonna say destroy and then this oh, it's gonna want this this dot game object there cool um and basically that should now mean that it um should get deleted as soon as it touches the player we're gonna have it so that it also adds to the player's inventory later. So to get ready for that, it might even add these curly brackets for now. Um, just like that. So that's that function pretty much exactly done. Um, in our terrain generation, I just want to modify one thing, which is instantiation. I just want to say plus 0 0.5 on the y-axis to hopefully avoid it from just spawning in the ground. Um, because that's not very nice. So that should be that done. In our tile drop, we just have to do one last thing, and that is drag and drop our tile script on it. And that should be done, I believe. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so I'm breaking these tiles. You can see that they're dropping just as they should, but they're not deleting because why? Okay, so I've worked it out after some testing. This should be on trigger enter 2D. And then this should be collider 2D, call. Uh, and now that should work. Ah, uh, it's really early in the morning here. So uh, please excuse my stupid mistakes. Hopefully this works. I, I can't believe I didn't spot that earlier. Let's see. Okay, yes, yeah, so now you can see that they're getting deleted, right? Yes, indeed. Perfect. Uh, a couple things I'm going to do, though. Uh, I kind of don't like them stacking on top of each other like this. So I am going to actually make it so they can rotate, so they bounce around kind of a little bit. Um, apart from that, I'm also actually, while we're in the rigid body, I'm going to reduce the gravity scale to maybe three, so they don't fall that fast because it is a bit quick. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, I kind of like that. That's nice. Um, the one thing we do actually really have to do, though, is because, for example, it, yeah, like we just did it then, um, not every tile should be doing a tile drop. For example, this grass, I don't want to drop tiles. So how can I make it stop it drop tiles? Quite simple. Uh, we just have to go to our tile class here. When it says it is background in background true, we're going to create another public bool tile drop equals. In most cases, it's going to be true. So let's do that. Um, that's fine as well. And in fact, I'm going to change this to false so it defaults as false. Um, then that shouldn't change any of these theoretically. 
Uh, yes, so it doesn't change those. But we do have this tile drop now. So for dead grass, for leaf, um, tall grass and snow grass, I don't want it to drop tiles. But that's not enough. We have to program that in. So in our terrain generation, all we have to do is say if we have to obtain the tile class. So we obtain the tile class the exact same way as doing this. Um, so boom, control paste that into there. If world class tiles, world tiles in our index of new vector to x and y dot tile drop. So if it's meant to drop a tile, then do this bit, which is literally the drop tile bit. That's all this two, these two lines do. Um, then drop the tile, otherwise don't do anything, and then it's just gonna delete it as is. So let's give that a go, and that should be it. Um, and then we can probably end the episode there because we've implemented tile drops. Let's see, so yep, that drops the tile, that's fantastic. I can collect those. Um, I can also place, the tiles I place drop tiles as well, right? Yes, they do. Okay, fantastic. Um, so, yeah. That's fine. If, if I break that, that doesn't drop a tile. Leaves don't drop tiles either. That's perfect. These all do. That's perfect. Um, and a couple of you guys were saying you don't want to see these stack on top of each other like this. Um, look, personally, it's up to you guys. If you guys want me to change that, I can change that by the next episode. I kind of like it, I won't lie. Um, because they kind of fall apart like this, which for the game I kind of want to make is good, but I can also show you guys the other way to do it if you want. Um, so that way they just, for example, if I if two of them fall on top of each other, they just overlap um, in the same position. They don't roll around either, they're not affected by physics, all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching this one, guys. Last thing I'm going to do for this episode is just head over here, uh, edit this, and say tile drops is done. Boom, that's another one done. Perfect. All right, and if you guys want to see this list in action as well, um, you know where it is. It's on the Discord. We have been kindly boosted as well by a couple of people, which is amazing. Um, and yeah, so people just have a chat. Last night we had a nice games night. Everyone jumped on some Rocket League, which was quite fun. But yeah, um, if you want to be involved in all that, the link is going to be in the description. Um, and yeah, so that's the end of this episode here. Thanks for watching, guys.